What's up, my online and offline teachers? Welcome back, or for the first time, to the content of Deshaun Johnson that informs and educates teachers. In today's video, what I am going to show you how to do, if you are a teacher that is teaching students how to mark up the text when they're reading, using certain strategies to show that they're interacting with the text, I'm going to show you how to take that from print to digital using Google Docs. Now you can use this with Microsoft Word, that's the originator program in terms of Word documents, but I personally prefer Google Documents because now of its simplicity, it's lightweight use. If I need to do some heavy duty stuff, I list it Microsoft Word, but I'm going to show you how to actually do this with Google Documents. Now, when you're actually marking up the text, one of the things that you can actually show the students, several things that we're actually going to use, tools to use when we're actually marking up the text. Okay, so two different features that we're actually going to use in order to accomplish this is number one, commenting, and number two, Google Draw. And as you can see, underneath the commented side, I have certain things like highlighting, underlining, bold, italics. And then with Google Draw, we'll act, well, we're actually going to take a screenshot of certain paragraphs and we're going to be able to manipulate and draw on those paragraphs in the way the same way that you actually would for if you was actually doing this on print. So I'm going to show you how to actually do that as well. The benefit about actually commenting, it actually gives the, the student that actual feel of marking a text, annotating, doing real life annotations just on a digital format. Okay, just on an electronic plane. They can highlight, and, and highlighting is actually going to be tricky, which we'll actually go into. They can still underline certain words that they need to see. They can highlight things in bold and, you know, kind of when they actually comment on it and they highlight something, they can write something to the side and just connect maybe some thoughts that they're having in terms of that specific information. With Google Draw, that's going to be even more interesting, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking. I'm just going to do more showing when it actually comes to that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So you see that I already have a story up on my screen. The story is titled Attack of the Mammoth. So this is a nice little fictional short story. But the first thing I would have my students to do is actually make a copy of the original story first. Because if you actually give it to them in Google Classroom, you either have the opportunity to either make a copy for all the students or they can actually view it. But if you don't make a copy for them in Google Classroom, we'll just do it here on the file. And this is actually a good thing to do because, well, they can't really do it. They can't do any of this stuff if it's just under view. And plus, if they make a copy of it and they mess up too much, they already have an original to back up on. And as a matter of fact, let me see. I'm going to put, instead of a copy of, I'm going to put um, annotated version. We'll put annotated. Annotated version. All right. Okay. An annotated version is the one that they're actually going to use. In order to make the copies, not copies, in order to make the corrections and the annotation, the notes that they're you're looking for them to actually make. So from here, the way that this will actually work, let's go ahead and I'll show you the comments part. The way that they will actually leave a comment, they would simply highlight a section that they would actually like to comment. They'll come over here and click the add a comment button. OK, and I'm going to actually be able to write a little note here. A man and his family were constantly on the move hunting for beaver. I'll just ask a simple question. Why were they hunting for beaver? I wonder. I used to have a beaver in my early life. All right, so I left and I made a note showing that I have some sort of like life connection to this particular text. We'll go ahead and hit comment. All right, and if I click off of this, we can see that this is already naturally highlighted. Now, if I go up here in the highlighted state and I try to use the highlighter that's up here in the tool section, highlight color, we'll choose red. All right, as you can see, it's not going to really show. The red isn't going to show at all. So what I have to actually do is I have to go ahead, come over here, delete this comment, and we can see that my actual highlight that I actually chose is now visible. Okay. So if you're using a comment section, you don't have to really worry about using a highlighter too much unless, you know, because the comments, leaving a comment will actually take care of the actual highlight function. So we're going to come back here and make that none. So now if I'm going to just focus on some different part of a text, I'm going to underline this. The woman sometimes silently. Maybe I'll leave another comment connecting this. I want to keep the word silently in mind. 
comment and that takes care of that okay so we have this on the side outside of the margin literally comments that actually connect to what the student actually wants to use and they can actually do the same thing using bold print or italics if they just want to keep certain things you know if they just want to try to remember certain things that's actually read from the text so these are also these are just good tools outside of just a writer writing and using bold and italics to place emphasis or different reasons when a student is actually reading and they're doing it digitally through Google Docs then this would be a good thing for them to actually do let's go ahead and I will show you now how to draw tool plays a big role into this whole tutorial and this whole marking up the text process so the first thing now I'm actually going to do now let's go to paragraph two I'm going to first take a screenshot using my snipping tool on my PC. And if you're using a snippet tool now, as of this time that I'm doing this tutorial, the snippet sketch is what's available. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use that. All right, let me bring this down in view of my computer. We'll go ahead and hit new. Okay, and from here, all I got to do is click and drag. Bam, I have my screenshot. All right, I'm going to save this now by clicking the save disk in the top right corner. Pictures. And I'm going to type in um, paragraph two. For the sake of this tutorial, paragraph two. Close out. Perfect. Now, what I actually like to do is after that paragraph, because the students will be able to edit as they so please onto this actual copy that they made we'll go ahead and go to insert image upload from computer all right perfect so now we have the actual image text here but actually I actually did this incorrectly you could just insert the image but what we really want to do is want to actually use this through the draw program so now you know how to insert the pic image just as it is but let's go to drawing let's go to new All right, and from here, we're going to click the picture icon, upload, choose an image to upload, paragraph two. All right, and from here, now we can really, really mark up the text in its natural state as it's actually intended to when we're doing this on a physical piece of paper. So what I actually like to do is maybe take the scribble tool here where I can freehand and I can circle some things or draw any sort of shape that I want to around my text. So from here, let me find something in this text. As she walked through the darkening evening, she heard the thump, 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 thump. So maybe I'm going to just kind of circle that. All right. Have a nice little circle there. And then maybe from here, I can actually have some sort of shape. So let me maybe draw an arrow. Maybe have an arrow and then from there. Okay, that's a little bit too big. Okay, and eh, that may be a little bit too big, but we'll, cause that's gonna block some of the other text. So we're just gonna delete that arrow. Let's just go ahead and continue to use our scribble line so we can kind of freehand, draw around there. And maybe now I wanna insert a text box to maybe make another little note here. Hmm. What could be coming for her making this type of sound all right perfect so now I'm going to kind of move this over here bring this up some there we go there so now a student will be able to freehand and add whatever they need to fully customizing their text on Google Docs as they see fit. Another thing I may want to try to do too is maybe I, I want to, instead of freehanded, maybe just adding some sort of shape here. So if I wanted to take a square and just, I don't know, highlight the end of this sentence here. Okay, we're going to actually affect the color. We're going to change the fill and make it transparent while keeping a border, okay, around the actual box so they can still see it, keeping a border around the text. And also, let me see if I wanted to change that border color. I can too and make that red. Boom. So, 
very nice little techniques and features that the students could actually use. We'll go to save and close. Okay. And now we have our marked up text from paragraph two. So the students can actually compare what's here in paragraph two and actual notes they just taken here. If you really want to get fancy, you can just go ahead and click on above the actual image and we can add a horizontal line or something. Make this smaller so it'll still fit or something like that. Okay. And that way they'll they'll be able to actually separate and see that this image right here is the notes that they actually took in marking up the text and they still have the original to read and go from there. So, or you could just delete this text right here and they could just replace it with what they're actually doing right now. They could just replace it here. Okay. And they will just have this text in its place. The marked up text that they just actually used. So either way will work fine. Just whatever, whatever's going to be best for your students. I just wanted to go ahead and kind of show you like if especially if you're an avid teacher and you're trying to teach students not only how to mark up their text just using pencil and paper but if they're doing an online assignment and they're doing something on maybe Microsoft Word or Google Documents this is also another good possibility okay that's going to be it for this video like share subscribe wherever you're watching this All right, that's going to be it for this video. Please like, share, comment. What do you actually think about this? Did you find this video helpful? And yeah, just, just get out to as many people as possible. Deshaun Johnson, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. God bless. Are you a tired, frustrated English teacher under constant testing pressure from state testing such as Texas Star and Louisiana Leap? You're at your computer, ready to lesson plan, just to find out you have no time to lesson plan? You need to prepare your students for testing, but you're inconvenienced with unnecessary resources mandated by your superiors? In today's world, students are bombarded with all types of distractions that doesn't involve reading, yet the test they usually struggle with the most is reading. As an English teacher, you know that the literary classics provide the highest rigor and most engaging stories that if you can just get your students to read them while using assessment based questions to accommodate your student your success rate will be at an all-time high and you'll kill two birds with one stone worry no more i got your back last minute lessons reading the audio series is designed to and created to make assessment based lesson planning convenient and easy for you so you don't have to pull your hair out Last Minute Lessons has a growing library of classic stories ranging from authors such as Edgar Allan Poe, The Brothers Grimm, Kate Chopin, and many more. Here's what you'll get in an individual lesson. Inside each Last Minute Lesson package, you will find a complete audio version of the story complete with music and sound effects. Audio version of the questions created. The Mask of the Red Death. Questions. In paragraph one, the Red Death had long been... A PDF of those same written questions with also available on Google Forms. There will be a link in the material resource. Questions are written to high level to standardize testing practices. With vocabulary questions, questions regarding viewpoints and perspectives, figurative language, literary elements, and more. Also coming complete is a story that has been reformatted that will make it easier for you and the students to find certain elements in the story. Each paragraph has a superscript element to it. You'll also find an answer key and a vocabulary list as well.
With audio versions of the questions and stories, your learners will become more engaged consuming the story from multiple mediums. Also, you as a teacher will be free from doing oral readings for students who are required by state mandates to receive audio support on text-based reading. Your students may feel like they're on top of the world from reading the tales of Edgar Allan Poe, or maybe not. So, press for time, click the link below to buy your time back. Or, if you need more info, visit the personal case study at www.deshaunjohnson.com forward slash blog forward slash last minute lessons for English teachers.